O incêndio na madrugada de hoje destruiu a base científica do Brasil na Antártica. Uma quarentena de chercheurs especializados nos les ecosistemas marins a dû être evacuée. In February 2012, a fire destroyed Brazil's research base in Antarctica. Almost everything was burned to the ground and two people died. The fire happened during a fuel transfer operation and one military officer who had left his post unattended to go to a party was considered criminally responsible and was convicted in a military court to a two-year sentence. It took eight years but Brazil is now ready to inaugurate its new state-of-the-art facility in Antarctica. In the first episode of our podcast in 2020, we're taking you on a trip to the South Pole. My name is Gustavo Ribeiro. I'm the editor-in-chief of the Brazilian Report. This is Explaining Brazil. The first time humans spotted Antarctica was in 1820 with the discovery attributed to a Russian expedition. The first landing is reckoned to have happened a year later by a British crew. But in the 19th and early 20th centuries, Brazil steered away from the South Pole, not having the appropriate vessels nor the technology to explore Earth's most inhospitable continent. At that point, Brazil limited itself to assisting researchers living from Rio de Janeiro. It was only in the 1950s that Brazil began to pay attention to Antarctica, with many scholars defending that Brazil should not recognize territorial claims from other countries and that Brazil should make a claim of its own. However, without a real stake in the South Pole, Brazil was not invited to negotiations concerning the continent, which culminated in the 1959 Antarctic Treaty signed by 12 countries with prior operations there, including the US, the former Soviet Union, Chile and Argentina. The treaty established the icy continent as an area exclusively dedicated to research without being owned by any one nation. Brazil would eventually become a signatory of the treaty in 1975, and that is when our story in the South Pole really begins, according to Professor Jefferson Simões, Vice President of the Scientific Committee on Antarctic Research. Early 1980s, Brazil had already signed the Antarctic Treaty, recognizing that as the juridical system of that region. He talked to us from the Chilean port city of Punta Arenas, the last tip of South America before Antarctica, but still almost 2,000 kilometers away from Brazil's new research base. Simões was preparing to head to Antarctica, and weather conditions were quite bad, so that's why you'll notice the sound breaking up from time to time. And began to understand that Antarctica and the extreme southern uh, Atlantic and the southern ocean, too, was essential, not only for geopolitical reasons, but also about uh, climate and weather for the southern part of South America. From that, uh, the, the program began to increase. Uh, we had the, the station built by 1984, and uh, Brazil sent a lot of students abroad to get PhDs on Antarctic uh, subjects. I was one of them. I was the first Brazilian glaciologist, and uh, from from those actions, we be, we began to mature. Until that, uh, about 2005, 2006, we had finally a research program with a strategic plan, and uh, that has changed a lot for the last 10 years. And uh, so we are much more interested in science that looks at the relationships, connections between the Antarctic environment and the Brazilian environment that bring questions that uh, helps the Brazilian society. So it has been quite a change, both geopolitically and on scientific interest. Before 1980s, we didn't know a lot about Antarctica. Professor, over these 30-something years, what have we learned from research in Antarctica that we didn't know before? That the most important thing is the role of the Southern Ocean in the control of the 
called the air masses that penetrate over the South America and sometimes can reach the southern part of the Amazon forest. So in the winter, it's quite important, for example, for agriculture, if you reach the coffee uh, uh, crops in the southern state of Sao Paulo, or even in the past we had uh, coffee plants in, in the state of Parna, and now it, is not, it has not been possible for the last uh, 40 years, mainly because the cold air masses began to reach further north at that time. But uh, we don't know what's going exactly happen now with climate change. We need to understand that. So one, one effort that we are doing is to include the viability of sea ice extent in the Southern Ocean. That's the natural phenomena with the highest change from summer to winter. And we need to include that, the sea ice cover in the weather forecast for Brazil and uh, also in climatic scenarios for the future. Also, we are learning about the climatic viability with several paleoclimatic studies, looking for the last 2,000 years. And uh, we are monitoring the ozone layer and that it has implications for the all South America society. But uh, for the last... Uh, couple of years, we also began to have a medicine research investigations and begin to look for the potential bioprospection, I would say, for some algae uh, microorganisms to see if you can apply and use that for some uh, medicine. By the way, Professor, how many times have you been to Antarctica? Ooh. <laughs> It has been a long time, yeah, 25 times, and uh, even to the South Pole in Atraverse. And, uh, and now uh, I'm responsible for managing the Cryosphere 1 scientific lab that is at 84 degrees south. That's about 2,500 kilometers south of the Brazilian Antarctic Station. Most of our listeners, or all of them actually, will never have the opportunity to visit the South Pole let alone go there 25 times. So can you tell us a little bit what it is like down there? We have, in fact, quite two different Antarcticas. One we call the Maritime Antarctica, where we have the Brazilian station. Uh, weather conditions oscillate uh, quite a lot. We have uh, huge storms each four, five, six days. Uh, temperature oscillate between minus 20 in the midwinter to 5 Celsius degrees positive in midsummer, and uh, it's wet. And uh, and the greatest difference is that a lot of life, uh, any kind of seals, penguins, uh, whales in the sea, and uh, it's it's our life rich part of an Antarctica in the coast, the islands and the coast. So as we go deeper inside of Antarctica, uh, towards the South Pole, uh, temperatures begin to fall. And uh, at the site of the Carosphere 1 lab, it for the degrees south, the temperatures of, the mean temperature is already minus 30 Celsius degrees can go down to minus 65. And then you begin to go up to the Antarctic plateau. It's even more dangerous, dry, cold, and we have crevasses in the ice. It's quite, sometimes it's quite nervous wracking to, to run over those areas with a lot of crevasses that break the ice. Uh, where we don't know sometimes what is, is beneath you. And uh, temperatures can go down even in the summer to minus 50 Celsius degrees. And then we have the South Pole, that is the, there is a huge night state station at 90 degrees south. And, uh, and further that, if you go to the top of the plateau, it's even more cold and it's a desert. Uh, 
a dust of snow and ice. You're describing quite brutal weather conditions. Were you ever in a situation where you feared for your life? I felt of uh, crevasses twice, but of course, I was tied to a rope and uh, no problem. It's just uh, it's a question of seconds. If I was not tied with the rope, I would go to the bottom, and that could, be, have, could have been the end. <laughs> I could have died, but not uh, thought to die because it's too fast. After the break, why research in Antarctica is in jeopardy despite the brand new base. Hi, I am Paulo Sotero, director of the Brazil Institute at the Wilson Center a renowned think tank based in Washington and a partner of the Brazilian Report. The Brazilian Report is a valuable partner of the Brazil Institute. The report's content, shared in our website, is well-researched, comprehensive and clearly presented. It deals with complex problems of public policy that challenges Brazil to add quality to its economy and society. Launched in the early 1980s, Brazil's Antarctic program has had many bumps. To make a long story short, we can separate a few dates. In 1982, we had the first fully Brazilian expedition in Antarctica, which scouted the best spot for building a base. Nós pisamos, uh, o território Antártico às 19 horas e 20, e 20 minutos, hora do Brasil. É, realmente é um continente de paz e é um continente de solidariedade. Câmbio. Two years later, the country inaugurated the Comandante Ferraz base. Between the 1990s and early 2000s, the program quietened down but became a part of Brazil's national defense plan in 2005, which established Brazil's presence in the South Atlantic as strategic. According to Brazil's Institute of Applied Economic Research, Brazil spent almost a half billion reais, or 120 million US dollars, on Antarctic research between 2005 and 2017. First, we must understand that 90% of this amount goes to logistics. It's not for science. It's just to keep the station, the ships, and it's covered by the Ministry of Defense in Brazil. So we like to say that's the rich cousin. The poor cousin is the Minister of Science, Technology and Innovations in Brazil that covers all the expenses of the universities and the research projects and the grants and the scholarships. So it's much less. Uh, and in average, we have about 800,000 to, in a good year, 1 million US dollars for, to cover all science expenses, labs and the uh, very important, the scholarship for PhD students. It has oscillated. And the thing that we see in Brazil is that we live in a roller coaster. Sometimes we have money, sometimes we don't have money. We have had in the past that we didn't receive anything. For the last two years, we have managed to guarantee until 2021 funding for 17 research projects. In general, those projects received between $200,000 to $400,000 to run the science for until 2021-22. So the big, the big question now is how to make this more stable in the years to come. I've been, of course, I'm as a, my, the main science, scientist in Brazil, polar scientist in Brazil, I, I've been quite involved in in trying to get this fund and to have some more stable institutional involvement. And that is, is going to be our main challenge for 21, 22, 23. We also had, of course, the 2012 fire that destroyed the base. 
After eight years, Brazil now has a base twice the size of the old facility, with 17 labs and capable of having 64 people at any given time. The structure, entirely built in China, is capable of resisting seismic activity, winds of up to 200 km per hour, and temperatures down to minus 20 degrees Celsius. In 2018, the Brazilian Antarctic program had the biggest annual invitation for bids in its history, 18 million reais. But the government has made no commitments past 2022. Brazil is currently the leader in Latin American research in Antarctica, but that could soon change. If you compare to the BRICS country, just South Africa, it has a scientific research program in Antarctica, worse financed than Brazil. And uh, they have an economy that's 120 of our economy. And of course, nowadays, uh, if you don't invest a stable amount of money in Antarctic science, it's quite easy to lose leadership. We can see, uh, for example, now that uh, the uh, countries like India, China, even more involved in Antarctic science. Uh, so, th as I, I said, we have funding until 2021, end of beginning of 22. From that, if we don't have the, the funding, we can a couple of years, three years, lose the leadership. We have a strong, co uh, we have a stronger research program. It's much more related to the Brazilian reality, and we. We are producing things that help the day-to-day -day Brazilians' uh, activities, but uh, I think that we for it's not for only for Antarctic science and Brazilian science, science in general. We we need to believe that it it, it creates and brings a lot uh, of uh, good things and improves the standard of living. Antarctica has always been something of an afterthought for the Brazilian public, and general awareness about the continent is very low indeed. Well, the great thing is that we must look at Antarctica as important as the Amazon for the, Bra for the Brazilian environment. Sometimes we don't look to the south and see that Antarctica, for example, is near to Rio Grande do Sul, my state, than Rio Grande do Sul is near to Roraima. The thing that I'm saying is that Antarctica is just there and is quite important for our day-to-day -day activities. Thank you, Professor Jefferson Simões, Vice President of the Scientific Community on Antarctic Research. If you want to read more about Brazil's presence in Antarctica, reporter Yara Lemos wrote a story for us from the South Pole. You should read it. This podcast was written, prepared, and produced by me, Gustavo Ribeiro. Ewan Marshall edits the final script. If you like this podcast, rate us on any platform you may be listening to Explaining Brazil. It only takes a second, but it is really important for us. The best way to support Explaining Brazil is to subscribe to The Brazilian Report, the journalistic company behind this podcast. Every day we have new content about Brazilian politics, finance, and society. We have also got exclusive newsletter services if you want to be briefed about what's going on in Brazil before starting your day. Subscribe now for a free trial and enjoy all of our content for seven days. And it is really free you don't have to submit any credit card information whatsoever. Go to brazilian.report slash subscribe. We want to say a big thank you to Thomas Nolan who donated for this show. And if you want to do like him and support independent journalism, just go to brazilian.report slash donate. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter, our handle is at Brazilian Report. And that's all for now. Happy New Year, by the way, and see you next week. <laughs>